Hello there and welcome. In this video we are looking at Epsom salts and how to use them to treat constipated, bloated fish or even those suffering with dropsy. Now Epsom salt is sometimes confused with another product called aquarium salt but please don't do this, it's a completely different product. Aquarium salt is basically regular salt, sodium chloride. Epsom salts, however, is something completely different. It's magnesium sulfate, so two very different types of salt. And a lot of the positive things that Epsom salts does for humans also happens with fish. So Epsom salts is good at reducing swelling and is a very good laxative which is why we use them to treat certain disorders in fish. Now when you buy Epsom salts, make sure that you're getting 100% or as close to it pure Epsom salts as possible and make sure it doesn't have any added chemicals such as scents or fragrances. So if your fish is a little bit fat or it hasn't pooed for a while, or maybe it's very round and its scales are sticking out from the side of its body, then Epsom salts is a good thing to add either to your aquarium to passively treat some of the symptoms that your fish are suffering. Or you can even give your fish a direct bath where you remove it from the aquarium and put it into a higher concentration of Epsom salts for a small amount of time. The idea of this is that the magnesium sulfate will draw out some of the swelling from the fish and hopefully if the problem is caused by a constipation issue it will help your fish to go to toilet. Now disorders in fish such as bloating, constipation, dropsy or swim bladder disorders aren't always caused by the same thing. There are actually quite a few different reasons why fish can get these disorders. So Epsom salts isn't the 100% miracle cure that you may be hoping for, but what it can do is relieve some of the stress from the fish that's suffering from these problems. And in that way, it can help to get the fish back onto the right track and hopefully recover. However, in the case of constipation, it is a very good cure for this problem. So this is what magnesium sulfate looks like. It's quite a large, clear crystal. Quite a large and clear crystal. So you can really differentiate it from table salt. It is pretty obvious that it's a different thing. Also, if you rub it between your fingers, it has an almost oily kind of texture. It's not as sharp as table salt. Now, the main problem with using Epsom salts is the fact that no one has really quite decided the right dosage to give the fish. Um, now, I've been through many, many different forums and threads and some people say add X amount, other people say add Y amount to your aquarium and no one can really decide what the correct dosage is. It's all kind of, let's just take our best guess and that's kind of spread through the internet and now it's very confusing. So I've gone through many different threads and I'm gonna tell you the dosage that comes up the most frequently and the dosage which the most people can agree on to be the safest but yet still effective dose. Right, so let's work out the dosage properly once and for all, going off the most common dosages found on all of the different threads online. Now firstly, let's establish what a gallon is. Now I would like to say that we're working off UK gallons, but I'm not that naive and I, I'm assuming that pretty much all of the threads online are working off US gallons, okay? So when I say per gallon, I'm talking US gallons. And all of the measurements online for some reason are all done in tablespoons and teaspoons. No one's actually sat down to work it out in, in grams. So let's work it out in grams as well. Now when I'm measuring, I'm using these spoons. I'm not using something I found in my drawer, in my home to make tea with. I'm using proper measuring spoons, okay? So the first most common dose that I found online is for when you're treating your entire tank. So you might want to treat your entire tank when more than one fish is suffering from this ailment or you don't want to take your fish out of that aquarium and you don't want to stress it out more than it has to be. So you just treat your tank passively and hopefully at a lower dose but for a longer period the fish will be helped by these Epsom salts. So. The most common dosage for this is one eighth of a teaspoon per five gallons. Okay, so one eighth of a teaspoon per five gallons. Now let's work out firstly how much one teaspoon 
of Epsom salt weighs. Now this is a flat, or as flat as I can get, teaspoon. It's one teaspoon. So one teaspoon of these Epsom salts is about 5.2 grams. It keeps varying. I think the wind pressure, is, the air pressure in here is a bit weird. But it's about 5 grams, let's say. Now that's one teaspoon. We want an eighth of that. So let's just divide it by eight. And we'll get one eighth of a teaspoon. So that's 0.65 grams of Epsom salts per five gallons US for passive treatment of your fish. Now this can be left in your aquarium forever because it will come out when you do water changes. But it's something that your fish can live in quite happily at that dosage. Um, they'll get some mild treatment from the Epsom salts and it won't do any harm if they're in it um, for a long period. Okay, so the next dosage and the other way to treat Epsom salts is via a short-term bath. So basically what you do with this is you take your fish out, put it into another container containing a solution of Epsom salts and aquarium water and you leave it in there for five to ten minutes and this is a highly concentrated bath of Epsom salts and it gets right into the fish really quickly, relieves the swelling quite strongly, um, hopefully we'll get right into the fish and give it some relief quite quickly. Now being a stronger dose you don't want to leave it in the water for too long. 10 minutes really is the maximum. Some people say 15 but to be safe let's say 10 minutes and then once it's had its bath you put it back into your aquarium uh, making sure that the water temperature that you're putting it back into is as close to as where it came from. So the most common dosage for the bath is in fact one tablespoon, that's tablespoon, per gallon. So that is the most common dosage I've found on all the forums I've dredged through to get these dosages one tablespoon per US gallon. Now this measurer is half a tablespoon so I'm going to do two of these level and we'll work out how much this weighs. Helps if the scales are on. Right. That's half a tablespoon. That's a tablespoon. So 17.6 grams. My scales are acting up a little bit. I mean, let's call it 17 and a half grams of Epsom salts per gallon of water. So there we have it. That is the dosages you want to use for your fish. Epsom salts is a very safe thing to use for your aquarium fish. As long as you don't overdose and as long as you don't leave the fish in the bath for too long, there is no reason why Epsom salts should be uh, toxic to your fish in any way. We see you need to avoid the, avoid anything that's got any fragrances in it or any other chemicals in it. You want 100% or as close to 100% Epsom salts as possible and you do not want to confuse it with aquarium salts. It's a very different product. But other than that I hopefully have answered one of the long-standing mysteries on the internet. Fingers crossed that this treatment helps your fish out. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or you'd like to query anything I've said in this video. If you like this kind of content, please remember to subscribe to my channel, uh, like this video as well. Thanks for watching and happy fish keeping!